Smoky. Yeah, it just fitted right in there. <laughs> Thank you, Josie. This morning's topic is put your faith to work. And in the Christian Bible, in the, in the book of James, there's a, a, a phrase that says, faith without works is dead. <laughs> now, what that means, of course, is that if we're not acting on what we believe, what good does it do? It gives an example in that, in that uh, book of James. Of if somebody comes to you and they're naked and hungry, and you merely say, oh, go in peace, <laughs> be fed, be warm, but you don't give them any clothes and you don't give them any, any food, what good is it? We can say all day what we believe in, but unless our actions are showing it, we don't really believe in it. Ernest Holmes said, if faith without works is dead, we should not only pray, we should act, contributing the best we have to the common purpose. Now, our theme, our common purpose for 2016 is a world that works for everyone. So if that's what we want to create, if that truly is our common purpose and our theme for the year, then it's probably a good idea for us to ask what we're doing as individuals and what we're doing as a spiritual community to work toward that. So when I start to look at that, the first question is that comes to me is, do we even believe it's possible to have a world that works for everyone? Great. Do we, I mean, can we get this picture of our mind of a world where everyone has enough to eat, where everyone has appropriate shelter, where everyone has an opportunity to do work that they love? Because if we can't imagine it, if we can't put, get a good picture of it in our mind and in our heart, the chances are we're still quite, quite away from it. If enough of us can imagine it, if we can visualize it, if we can make it real, then we can put those thoughts, we can put those pictures, we can put those knowings into that one mind that we call the divine mind, and that's where action takes place. Because God, spirit, the law, whatever you want to call it, knows how to take our intentions, knows how to take our dreams, knows how to take what we are willing to act on, and open doors and make the way clear for that to happen. We get to affirm it, we get to know it, we get to stay with it in our minds. And that reminds me of Kyle Dake, and he's gonna come up here. Kyle is a wrestler who was written about in last month's Science of Mind magazine. Kyle used affirmations, one of the tools that we teach in Science of Mind and Spirit, to make history as the first college wrestler to win an NCAA title in four different weight classes. Holy cow! Yeah, four different weight classes. Now, here's how he did it. For three and a half years, Kyle worked with affirmations in the morning and at night. He had a red covered spiral bound notebook and he diligently did his affirmations. Now, what he did is when he was a freshman, uh, and you can see his um, things that he claimed, when he was a freshman, he, his affirmation was 2010, 141 pound national champion. He wrote that once in the morning and once in the evening. And of course, the national championship was his. <clears throat> the next year, when he was a sophomore, he wrote twice in the morning, and twice in the evening, um, 2011, 149 pound national championship. Of course it was his. The next year, he wrote three times in the morning, three times in the evening, and it was the 157 pound national championship, and that was his. <laughs> and then when he was a senior, he committed to writing this four times in the morning, four times in the evening, and he was up to 165 pound. Um, category, and he won all of them. And what he attributes it to is this process of doing affirmations, this process of holding his goal, of having the faith, and yet 
putting his faith to work by doing his affirmations and, of course, training diligently. Our founder, Ernest Holmes, said, Faith has been recognized as a power throughout the ages, whether it be faith in God, faith in one's fellow men, in oneself, or in what one is doing. The idea that faith has only to do with our religious experience is a mistake. Faith is a faculty of the mind that finds its highest expression in the religious attitude, but always the one who has faith in their own ability <clears throat> accomplishes far more than the one who has no confidence in themselves. Those who have great faith have great power. And if we want to know what we really have faith in, all we have to do is look at our lives. For our lives outpicture our beliefs. Our lives is where the rubber hits the road and whatever it is we believe shows up. So do we really believe we deserve to have an abundant lifestyle? Do we really believe that we deserve that absolutely fantastic relationship? What do we have faith in? What do we really believe? Because there's no such thing as faith without results. It shows up whether we want it to or not. The very process of having faith, of focusing on that faith, changes our perceptions. It changes the way we look at the world. It changes what we see, what we look for. And that changes our experiences. So the question is, what do you have faith in? Because we can choose. We can choose to have faith in abundance or lack. We can have, choose to have faith in knowing that we deserve love or not. <clears throat> We can have faith in failure or success. It is totally up to us. And we get the results of that in our life. So faith means having certainty and a desired outcome, of course. But unless we're going to act on it, we never get to that desired outcome. I'm reminded of the 9-11 first responders. <clears throat> And I think we can all remember where we were on that day. I think we can all remember all of the, the tragedy and yet all of the heart-opening service that we saw. The 9-11 first responders certainly had faith and they acted on it. If they didn't have faith that they could make a difference, they wouldn't have gone into those collapsing buildings. They wouldn't have sifted through the rubble. They wouldn't have done all of those things that were so important and that touched our hearts so deeply. And if they had the kind of dead faith that wasn't real, they never would have acted at all. And we can only imagine how many more people would have perished and they not have the faith <clears throat> and the willingness to act on it. So we have to have faith, and we have to act on that faith. Just like they did, because the faith that they had on 9-11 and the days and weeks following that was a faith that is alive, a faith that is full of action, full of heart, full of life. And we have to be willing to act. We have to be willing to do our part. <clears throat> You've possibly heard the story that I'm going to tell about Joe. Joe was um, a man who was having some financial difficulties. I mean, his, his business had gone bust, and he wasn't sure how he was going to pull out of it. And he was so disturbed that he decided <coughs> he ought to pray. I mean, it was really bad. <laughs> this is bad. This is bad enough to pray. Okay, yeah. Nine one one prayer. Um, or, or, yeah, nine one one prayer. Um, and so what he did was he said, "Okay, God, I really, I really need you to work with me here. I have lost my business. I'm about to lose my home. I need to win the lottery. 
<laughs> okay, so oh. he prays, louder and I <clears throat> someone else wins, of course. And uh, so then he goes back into prayer. Oh, God, I have lost my business. I've lost my house. I'm about to lose my car. All I ask is that to win the lottery this one time. Of course, someone else wins. So he goes back and the prayer says, God, why have you forsaken me? I've prayed, I've been good, I've done all I need to do. And suddenly the clouds open, <laughs> light burst through, and the amazing voice of God said, Joe, haven't you heard that faith without works is dead? You need to do your part. You need to participate in this. Get a grip, Joe, by a load. <laughs> We have to do our part. We can't just pray and not be willing to step up, not be willing to do what we're supposed to do. So we have to build our faith, and then we have to act on it. But how can we do that? How can we build our faith? So I don't know about you, but there are times when, you know, faith is kind of hard to find in some things. When I need to kind of stop, step back, and do a little building. Do a little building. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so we can do that by, by being inspired, allowing ourselves to be inspired by other people, people who have acted on their faith. And a, a couple of men who have acted on their faith are going to come up on the screen just any minute now. <laughs> and these two men um, were the founders of 9-11 Day. And 9-11 Day has been, has been uh, declared you know, by the Congress and by President Obama. It's the day of service and remembrance, often just called 9-11 Day for short. And these two fellas have worked on this for years. Um, it's, one of them is David and one is Jay. Jay is on this side. And um, he lost his brother on 9-11. And so it has been his life work to make a difference. And so what has happened is they have encouraged people to, to serve on this day, to remember the, the spirit of service that was so, so present on 9-11 and the days afterwards. Here's what they have to say. We wanted something positive to come from the loss of so many innocent people in such a terrible way. We didn't want the terrorists to have the last word in how 9-11 would be remembered. They go on to say, we've worked to redefine the day, focusing instead on all of the goodness that people everywhere showed in response to the attacks, along with the remarkable sense of togetherness that seemed to dissolve our differences for a while. We felt this was the best way to honor the victims, their families, and the heroes of 9-11, keeping that spirit of unity, empathy, and service alive, and passing it on to future generations. So we get to be part of that. We get to be part of that remembering remembering the heroes and remembering the service and committing to service in our own lives. So what can we do to build our faith so that it gets stronger and stronger? We can allow ourselves to be inspired by people like David and Jay. We can read stories. We can listen to things. We can really just allow it to get in our heart. And as we do that, as we tune into other people who are inspired, it reminds us that we can trust. It reminds us that we can absolutely allow ourselves to step out and do what needs to be done. And of course, we can pray. We don't have to wait until it's you know desperate, the last minute. We know that. Prayer is what we're, we're founded on here. So we, as we pray for faith, we get it. I mean, you can't pray the spirit of the universe or life or whatever you call it for faith and not have things show up that are going to support you in building that faith. In knowing that spirit 
can be trusted. And then, of course, we need to listen to our intuition. We need to listen to that still, small voice that always, always, always guides us when we are open to it. And then, of course, we need to act on that, even if it feels risky. I'm going to read three powerful quotes about risk. First of all, Edwin Gaines said, Wonderful, magical things can happen if you're willing to commit to putting yourself out there, stepping outside your comfort zones, playing at the game of risk. Because it feels like risk. It feels like playing without a net. But when you make a commitment, you are never playing without a net. God is your net. Mm -hmm. Taking risks <coughs> and acting <coughs> on your commitment reduces you to simply trusting God. And Patrick Overton said, I love this one, when you have come to the edge of all the light that you know, and you're about to step off into the darkness of the unknown, faith is knowing that one of two things will happen. There will be something solid to stand on, or you will be taught to fly. Wow. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and my dear friend, Reverend Judy Morley, wrote, Faith means having a certainty in a desired outcome. Faith doesn't mean we know exactly how to re reach the desired outcome. If we knew just how everything would unfold, it wouldn't really take faith, would it? God rarely lays out a full plan. More frequently, we see the next step and nothing more. We must trust each step and move forward regardless of the path. How do we cultivate that faith? We learn to listen to the still, small voice within us. So where are we with believing that we can create a world that works for all? If we're not totally into that faith that that's possible yet, we can work to develop and strengthen that belief by looking at all the ways that people, other people, are working toward a world that works for all. And if we truly believe it's possible, or if we want to truly believe it's possible, to have a world that works for everyone, then let's keep acting in ways that show it. <laughs> now, I know many of you here volunteer and give in amazing ways that are making a difference. But just in case you want some other suggestions of other things you can do, I just happen to have some. <laughs> okay, today is 9-11 day, National Day of Remembrance and Service. And today, Americans all over are doing amazing things. There are people that are packing hundreds of thousands of meals for homeless and poverty-stricken people and families. They're packing up food that can be taken and eaten later. There are people who are working with elders, helping them with home maintenance projects, housework, yard work. There are people who are working with animal shelters, planting trees, picking up litter in their neighborhoods. There are so many ways to serve. And there's an organization um, called Compassion Games International. I just heard about this a couple of days ago. I haven't had nearly enough time to explore it, but it's an organization that is, that what they do is they make these games. Even some of them are competitions that can be played by teams. Um, and I'm interested in looking into it more. And they also have things that individuals can do. 
Now, um, they have some really cool opportunities. And you received a handout, um, you should have received a handout that, that I put together. And what, the, what this is, is that some of the suggestions that CompassionGames.org <coughs> has for little things we can do, little things we can do that will make a difference. And so I challenge each of you to pick at least one of those things to do today. Now, it may seem like a small thing, but just like when we put a handful of change in the drawer every time we take it out of our pocket, eventually you've got, you know, $100 or so, the little things build up. They do make a difference. That's the way we change the whole mood of our world, by showing compassion, showing love, showing caring, and and sharing. Because as we do that, there's more kindness in the world, there's more compassion in the world, and there's absolutely more joy in the world. So your homework, should you decide to accept it, is to put your faith to work this week by acting in ways that positively demonstrate your belief and the possibility of a world that works for all. We have come to this planet at this time to make this kind of difference. We are the ones that we've been waiting for. Are you with me on that? Yes. 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 Let's take it into prayer. In this place of hope, in this place of remembering the service that was provided by so many on that day, those days following, those weeks following, the original 9-11, in the spirit of that love and service and compassion and faith, we simply open ourselves to be receptive to that to allow it to flow through us, knowing that it's all spirit, knowing that everything we experience is spirit unfolding for us, even those things that look pretty interesting. And so what I know is that we are blessed. Each person here feels within them that deep growing of faith well, there's never any time when we get done growing our faith. And so for each of us, I claim greater and greater faith and a greater and greater willingness to step out in faith, to listen to that still, small voice, to allow ourselves to be used by the divine. Because if we are not willing to how can God use us? And so I claim that we are. I claim that there is a willingness, a magnetization within each person that just pulls us forward into this vision of a world that works for all. Knowing that we each have a part, that each one of us is vital to creating this world that we know we can create. And so I'm grateful, grateful, grateful for all of the support that we have in doing this. Grateful for the opportunities, <coughs> grateful for the connections, grateful for the inspiration, grateful for the prayers, grateful for all of it. For I know it leads us into that world that works for everyone. And so I allow light to surround this entire planet, blessing each person, each sentient being, activating that love, activating the caring, activating the receptivity, activating the dream. 
And so in my gratitude, I simply let this go into the world, knowing that it is done. It is done in magical ways that bring us miracles, that bring us hope, that bring us joy. It has been spoken. It has been released. It is done. And so 